Hi, welcome to the demonstration of Unisem simulation package. So we'll, we'll be simulating a very simple process system which is configured on the ignition SCADA system. The system comprises two tanks and uh, well, there's a pump which uh, fe feeds water from one tank to the other and there is an intermediate valve. So the pump can be started and stopped using these two momentary push buttons and pump status on off trip is indicated on this uh, multi-state indicator and valve can be open closed in an incremental manner with this momentary push buttons and this dial indicates the flow through the pump. Right now simulation is in freeze so nothing is changing and uh, we have defined um, uh, folders in ignition database for uh, um, the analog inputs coming from the SCADA system to the simulation system. So this folder is for analog inputs, but obviously there are no analog inputs in this system. Uh, but we have defined four floating point uh, tags. They are not used. Next folder is analog for the analog outputs, which are basically these four uh, values. One is a tank one level, AO1, AO2, analog output two is the motor current, analog output three is the pump flow, output four is the tank level two. So these are all float and uh, simulation is in freeze, so nothing is changing. Then we have defined the simulation digital inputs which is basically uh, the pump start, motor start, push button, stop push button, these are momentary push buttons and uh, momentary push button for opening closing these valves. Similarly we have a digital output folder which has got four digital outputs and these uh, <coughs> indicate uh, the uh, the checkbacks from the once moment you press a start button there is a checkback as it comes from the PLC so and these are the four digital outputs for the checkbacks and there are two outputs defined as integers to represent the multi-state indicator one is uh, for the pump which to indicate on off and trip condition of the pump and this is to indicate it's open or wall fully open, fully close of or intermediate uh, state. So the number can be 0, 1 or 2 indicating whether the pump is off, on or trip and IO2 is integer output 2 to indicate whether the valve is fully closed or intermediate position or fully open represented by tag value of 0, 1 and 2. So that's all that's required to be configured and defined in the ignition. Now let's switch to the model. Now first of all we have to create the database. So for that we run the UniDB tool. And we have to create a database. We'll call it demo. Obviously, the database doesn't exist, so we create the database. Now it creates an empty database with some system variables. So delta tx, system variables start with xx, so that there is no conflict with our model variables. So first variable is the delta t time step of integration and the total time of integration. And uh, uh, this tool, database tool right now currently is um, uh, a console oriented application as mentioned in the introduction section, but we will have a GUI based interface. So we can, using this tool, we can add variables interactively or read variables from files. And then we can save the database, create some reports out of it, add delete partitions. But for this demo, we'll read the variables from a file. So let's 
select option 2 file name is demo dot add so it creates the database so basically the tags that are required for the simulation can be exported from an excel so all the partitions are defined first and all the variables are defined next so first we have a const constraints partition in under segment 1 which is for the constant segment segment 2 is for the state variables so there we have defined a partition called global vars segment 3 is monitored vars now under global vars, vars partition we have defined a sub partition called model vars and the size of and each partition is given here and this is the definition of the partition and this is the owner who is the owner in case we have to trace why this variable or partition has been added so this has been added by the system administrator so another partition is the SCADA variables this has got a size of 500 words so after the partitions are defined we have to define individual variables now this is a variable which is actually an array which is added to the SCADA vars that is this partition it's got a size of 100 and it's got unit it's a type is logical its units are true false and what is the definition and its initial value and the owner <clears throat> so we have these four arrays defined array variables or tags defined in the database under SCADA vars so this maps with the um, the ignition uh, database that we've just seen and each array is given 400 bytes 400 words and all of them fit under SCADA vars partition now after the arrays <clears throat> we have to define the the constants the pump start time constant how much time the pump takes so these are all the variables required to write the mathematical models for the pump and the valves and <clears throat> the fill rate of the tank so these are all defined under constants partition that is this partition so these are scalar variables this is the first dimension and this is the second dimension and this is again the type of the <clears throat> primitive tag is real or float its units are per unit its definition and its initial value 0 0.01 that's how much it should increment every cycle so these are all simulation specific uh, parameters that you will come to know once you <clears throat> know the equations now these are the momentary push buttons as we define in the ignition system we have to have a corresponding variable defined um, uh, in the simulation database as well so these are the in inputs input variables which go under digital input partition and uh, which is defined here uh, digital inputs and similarly the digital outputs are defined under uh, digital outputs partition that is this partition so d01 d02 whatever we saw in the ignition corresponding it can have a different name uh, but it should have the same sequence similarly we have the four analog outputs these are all the SCADA variables from here to here and these are the simulation variables that is the state variables motor status motor current tank level pump speed pump flow valve position so these all go under the model variables partition and they are scalars it's not 
an array and uh, so this is how <coughs> we have exported this <coughs> into our simulation database <coughs> and <coughs> these have been added into the um, simulation database now we can generate a report just to see how the structure of data looks like so option 5 so it has created the report we'll have a look at it then we have to save the database even if you don't save and when you exit it will automatically save but for intermediate saving that option 8 is provided now exit so we have created the database now if you want to look at the report sorry so this is how the structure of database looks like and this is how we will have a, a ui in the future versions where the tree structure of the entire database will be displayed for user to um, edit the database and add variables interactive just like an ignition system so as you can see there's a segment one for constants and we have defined a partition there called constants and these are the individual tags the motor start time constant wall increment tank fill rate all these are defined in the constant segments because they don't change with the plant conditions segment 2 is for the simulation state variables under that we've got a system partition where the system variables like time step of integration and total time of integration and the simulation status are stored this user doesn't have to add it is automatic uh, added automatically under then under segment 2 which is the um, state variable seg segment we have a global was partition uh, under that we have another partition called model wars uh, which define the state variables for the model and the SCADA wars which further uh, are defined in sub partitions of digital inputs and digital outputs and analog inputs and analog outputs with these variables matching the corresponding ignition uh, tags now these will be communicated we use to communicate with the ignition uh, through the communication model of uh, unisim and segment 3 is for storing the monitored variables we don't have any uh, monitored variables most of them are uh, already represented as uh, digital outputs so that's all about the database module now the next step is to write the models so we have written the models in the Fortran file <clears throat> now this is how the models have to be written now this needs some knowledge about the equations mathematical equations so and these are written manually not through a tool so the most imp uh, important thing is that to understand here is that we have to write with a special syntax ct in the c c for is a comment line for fortran whereas this combination ct means it's a tag as far as the preprocessor is concerned after ct you define the variable that you, your model uses from the database so these are the variables that we'll be using in the the models the motor status motor current level all these will be computing dynamically based on the push button and inputs received from the SCADA system so these are the equations which are written manually this is a flip-flop and if status is on then the pump speed is computed as a first order lag and things like that 
so anyway this is a little uh, mathematical we will not go into details so we have to use the preprocessor uniprep sorry java uniprep we'll again ask the database we'll call demo now the database exists so then we have to give the model name model1.4 so it says uniprep successful and now the model if you look at the model again it will have a signature at the end it is processed at such and such time and if if some tags were not correct they would have given you an error here okay so the third step well, now we have built a uh, compiled our model so we have to link all the models using a batch file i will not go into details of that so i have already got a runtime uh, configured uh, so we will have to execute that unis sim okay now <clears throat> the, the the runtime executive has started and it display the status so again this is a console based application all this is going to be changed to a ui based um, application wherein you will have to just start stop uh, the simulation using button button clicks and menus etc but right now it's command oriented so it shows the status of the simulator as free it's in freeze we are not at connected to the server and we are not online and host name is from Agile. and snapshot number is zero we have not restored any snapshot now first of all we have to initialize the variables so for that be, uh, before that the, uh, if you click help so these are the commands it supports dollar connect to connect the host name if you don't specify host name it will connect to the local machine this will put the system online that is the communication with the ignition will start but this online command can be given only after you connect successfully offline will stop the communication restore a snapshot number and snap and snapshot number 1 to 10 will take a snapshot of the current state variables run will start the execution you have to act by default as you can see it's in freeze mode so if you give dollar run it will start executing and if you specify run how many cycles 10 or 20 so after that many cycles it will stop dollar freeze will pause the simulation while it's running dollar status will display this status window anytime and then execution time display on or off will switch on or switch off at the end of every cycle it will display how much real time has be, has lapsed because the time step of integration can be one second or half a second or quarter of a second but actual time taken for execution of your models has to be in real time so this will switch on switch off the display of execution every cycle now monitor a tag um, the database variable can be any database variable can be monitored during the runtime so you can define a list of up to 20 maximum tag that can be displayed uh, continuously on the on the uh, screen of course you can monitor on this on the SCADA ignition SCADA all the variable that are coming onto that SCADA system through trends or logs or whatever uh, is supported by the SCADA system so dollar list displays what are the variable that you have currently selected for monitoring 
dollar clear will clear the monitored list now dollar load is a file it loads initializes the variables from a tag equal to value pair file uh, that's what we will do in the next step and dollar help is to display this menu and if you just enter a tag it will display its current value if you on the command prompt if you say tag equal to value it initializes that tag to a given value and you can initialize an array with a repeat count so right now we are in freeze mode we can look at the status shows we are in freeze mode so first thing we have to do is to load the simulation variables so that is um, I think yeah so there is a file which load demo dot load which contains the time constants the delta t <clears throat> all the constants are initialized here so now but still we are in freeze so next thing we have to do is to connect if I don't specify a server name it will take the local which is Pramaj now it, it has connected with the ignition system and we are still in freeze and but server is connected but we are not online so we have to go online now the state is changes to online now if you <clears throat> say run then you can see <clears throat> wait a second yeah oh yes we um, we are in run mode but uh, our pump is off and everything is off valve is fully closed so we have to first start a pump and this tank is 100% full this tank is empty so if we say start now we have to run actually yeah if I say start yeah so the pump becomes on and this is starting current so all these variables are coming from our simulation models now the valve is fully closed and there is no flow here but if you close the valve open the valve slowly the flow will increase so as you can see there is a flow increasing if I open the valve keep it pressed lean on the button then the flow increases further So as you can see the, um, the push button status is also indicated by ignition. Now we can also initialize the tank level directly from the screen. So for that the variable is tank1 underscore level. If I just press that, it will display the value as 0.9. If I display again, it would have changed, dropped further because fluid is flowing from one tank to another. And I can as well initialize this to some value. So as you can see right now it is 0.87. Now if I make it 0.5, now it's become 0.5. So this is how instructor uh, can change some of the external parameters. And there's a logic built which says that there has to be a minimum 20% level 
maintained in this tank to maintain the net positive suction head at the pump inlet otherwise there will be cavitation in the pump so to see that effect let's uh, let's change the level to 25 and it will drop moment it drops below 20 the pump will trip the permissive will go and actually the pump will stop so let us see let's increase the flow yeah it's 21 percent moment it drops below 21 there is a fault actually this is not correct it should not be fault fault is for an internal fault in the pump there should be a permissive lamp which 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 becomes red missing and the pump should stop not trip but anyway this simulation is not is only for a demo purpose now even if i try to start the pump it will not start because the logic doesn't allow unless we have the level as about 20 it will not start so as you can see this flow has also dropped now maybe if i change the tank level to 0.5 then you can see the permissive is available now if I start pump starts and the flow starts building as the speed picks up and it will reach, reach a, uh, a steady state value based on the valve position so this is just a very simple demo to demonstrate a concept with this like this we can simulate any complex system uh, and it needs a lot of knowledge of the modeling um, techniques and the equations which we have a rich set of library uh, for the mathematical models for the plant as well as the control loops and the logic gates and we can always uh, enhance it based on your specific requirements so in this manner we can simulate any plant whether it's a process plant or a chemical plant or a refinery or a power plant or a manufacturing plant and any kind of PLC uh, whether it is uh, Allen Bradley or Siemens those logic gates um, we have to have and we already have a library of some of the uh, standard PLC building blocks so that's all about the simulation executive and now if I want I can freeze the simulation with this command now you can see the freeze mode is on whenever there is status change this window is displayed and with the help of with the help of um, uh, GUI will be able to see the status online so once you're in freeze we can give a quit exit the simulation before that we can one more thing we can show is that take a snapshot let's say snap number five so, so this snapshot is stored and we can quit simulation and we can restore to that same initial condition if we start again that is java unisim database name now if i say restore 5 We have the same parameters and if we start the execution simulation uh, all the initial condition which when we uh, saved this IC initial condition file are restored back so you can say the state of of the plant during startup or during emergency or during cold start or warm start 
uh, different types of initial conditions you can define up to any number right now it is restricted to 10 but you can make it 50 or 100 whatever and also we'll have we'll have a feature to do a backtrack that's automatically it'll take the snapshot every one minute so if something goes wrong you can roll back within next previous five to ten minutes of uh, simulation and restart from that point so that's all the brief demo of the uh, tool but um, it's quite a uh, high-tech field and quite interesting uh, to have such a tool for uh, your training of your plant operators for normal operation or emergency handling or even to control and tune your uh, control systems <clears throat> so there are plenty of ways you can use this simulation so that's all about a demo thanks for watching